Hello, and welcome to The Signal, Workplace NL's health and safety podcast. Workplace NL is the Workers' Compensation Board in Newfoundland and Labrador, Canada. The focus is to promote safe and healthy workplaces, provide return to work programs, and offer compensation to injured workers and their dependents. This series of podcasts will provide you with the latest information on how workplaces can protect the health and safety of workers. Please enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to The Signal, Workplace NL's health and safety podcast. I'm your host, Sherry Philpott, OHS educational consultant with Workplace NL. Today I'm here with Catherine Keogh, team lead with the Claims Services Department here at Workplace NL. We're going to discuss the life cycle of a worker compensation claim and what employers and workers need to know. Welcome to The Signal, Catherine. Thank you for having me, Sherry. To start, how about you tell us a little bit about yourself? What is your experience with Workplace NL and working with worker compensation claims? So I've worked in the field of disability management for almost 20 years. My career started at Medivy Blue Cross, where I worked as a disability case manager for two years, managing short and long-term disability claims. In 2007, I came to Workplace NL and was one of the first early and safe return to work facilitators hired, which was a new position to Workplace NL at that time. After a few months in that role, I started as a case manager and worked in that position from 2007 to 2014. In 2014, I moved to return to work program coordinator position and was in this job until 2019. In this position, I began working with the employers in the province on developing or strengthening their return to work programs. I loved this position and got to see a lot of very different workplaces around the province from fish plants to mines and saw firsthand some of the ways that employers were changing their workplaces to make them safer and also ingenious ways of how they were able to return injured workers to the workplace. In 2019, I started as a team lead in our claims services area. I now lead and mentor a team of case managers. It's a very busy position, however, I love this one as well and love being back in the claims work. No matter how long you do this work, there will always be something that you have never seen before, which keeps it interesting for sure. Absolutely. It sounds like you have quite the vast experience working with return to work and claims. Uh, So firstly, let's define what a claim is. So what is a workers' compensation claim? So basically any injury that arises out of and in the course of someone's employment can be a potential workers' compensation claim. What starts the process on Workplace NL's end is an employee seeing their health care provider regarding the injury and the health care provider submitting a report to Workplace NL. Once that is received and there are forms that the employer and the worker also submit uh, with further details around the injury, pay information, etc., Once all that information is received, the claim will be adjudicated by our entitlement department. Okay, so to help people gain a better understanding of the claim process, could you walk us through the initial steps of a claim? Sure. So firstly, the incident needs to be reported to the employer. This is a very important step and needs to be done as soon as possible. If the employer knows as soon as possible, then they have the ability to accommodate if necessary and also have the employee fill out an incident report. Then the employer would do the accident incident investigation on their end to prevent other staff from potentially having injuries. If the employee requires medical attention as a result of the injury, then that starts the process and this medical form would get submitted to Workplace NL. Upon receipt of this, our claims registration department would follow up with the employer to obtain a Form 7, the employer's report of injury. The employer can fill out the Form 7 on Connect, which is our online services for employers. And the worker also needs to submit the Form 6, which is the worker's report of injury. And the Form 6 can also be completed online through the My Workplace NL portal. And the link for this is also on our website. Once all three pieces of documentation are on the file, the claim would then go to our entitlement department. While we are gathering the information in claims registration, our return to work facilitators and case managers are referred the claims to review for any return to work opportunities and to explore whether we can get the injured worker uh, back in the workplace. The exploration of return to work should be occurring right from the day of injury. Also during this stage, so approximately the first two weeks of the injury, injured workers can self-refer to physiotherapy or chiropractic treatment. If the claim does end up being denied, then the treatment would just stop as of that date. If entitlement reviews the claim and accepts it and the injured worker is not fully back to work, then the claim will be referred to a case manager in our claim services area. Any claim where the injured worker is not back to full hours and duties is considered a lost time claim and is managed by a case manager to ensure that they are able to get back to doing their full hours and duties. 
Our goal is to return the individual to whatever their job required at the time of the injury. So having a job description from the employer is very important to help confirm this. Most claims are either paid and closed when they are in entitlement or closed soon after they are referred over to a case manager. Okay, so you just mentioned that the majority of claims are either closed in entitlement or closed shortly after the case manager receives this. Uh, Could you walk us through what happens when claims are still open after this point? Sure. So throughout the claim and at all stages, our goal is to reconnect the injured worker to the workplace as soon as they are functionally able to do so. Case managers and return to work facilitators are in contact with healthcare providers and employers all the time to find out what duties are available and whether the healthcare providers are in agreement with the worker attempting those duties. During this stage, there could still be someone completing a return to work program or return to work being explored. If the injured worker is in a return to work, then the case manager is ensuring that the return to work is progressing during this stage. If there is a lack of progress, then the individual may require further medical investigations, for example, diagnostic testing, or maybe um, see a specialist. Some injured workers require further strengthening in a clinic-type setting, and we call this clinic-based occupational rehab. And they may do a program like this in conjunction with their return to work programs to help maintain that connection with the workplace. At this stage, some claims get referred to an occupational therapist to oversee the return to work and progress it appropriately based on objective functional information. For claims with no return to work happening, they may get referred to an occupational therapist to help with identifying whether return to work is appropriate at this time and to get some objective functional information. Some jobs require a certain level of function before they can return to work, and those individuals very likely may do the clinic-based occupational rehab program and then commence a return to work. Um, During this stage, some claims are completely in medical management, given the seriousness of their injury, so they would likely be getting diagnostic testing completed, awaiting specialist appointments, etc. If applicable, return to work would still be explored on these claims as well. Okay, and then uh, what would happen to a claim um, that would go on for an extended period of time, like if the return to work is not fully completed? Yeah, so basically I consider this claims greater than six months old, and during this stage there are still claims going through return to work or programs with an occupational therapist. Again, once they reach the pre-injury level where they are doing their full hours and duties, their claim would close. At some point, once a claim is older than six months, an injured worker will medically plateau, And what this means is that their healthcare providers are not recommending any further treatment, diagnostics, or specialist appointments for their injury. At this stage, they would be functionally as good as they are going to get. Once this is confirmed, we would review the claim with regards to where they are in relation to their pre-injury job. If the worker has been participating in a return to work program, but hasn't been able to get back to their full hours and duties, then we would write the employer at this stage to determine if they are able to permanently accommodate the worker doing what they are currently doing. The claim would close at this point if the employer can accommodate and the worker is able to make the same money as they were making at the time of their injury. For a person who reaches a plateau and they haven't participated in a return to work program, in most cases we would refer these people to an occupational therapist to determine what their function is. There are some claims that are more serious that the medical information on file would support that they are totally disabled and we wouldn't require a functional assessment on these claims. Um, If the worker does get an assessment completed and they have at least a part-time, so by that I mean four four hours per day that they're capable of working, or a full-time work day, which would be eight hours or greater, we would write their pre-injury employer regarding permanent accommodation. If the employer is able to accommodate, fantastic, the claim would close at this point. In some situations, if the accommodated position is at a different salary than the worker's pre-injury salary, there could be a small amount of wage loss payable to that worker, and this would be called a partial extended earnings loss, and we abbreviate that by EEL, um, amount payable to the worker, and they would be entitled to this amount of money until they turn 65 or they actually earn more than that EEL amount. So now I'll explain what happens if the employer isn't able to accommodate. So if that situation happens, then the worker would be referred to labor market reentry, and we abbreviate this by the acronym LMR. Um, This service is provided by external clinics, and the LMR planners take the functional information, 
the worker's job history and education to determine other occupations that are suitable for them. The planners have to provide work personnel with at least a minimum of three options. If they complete their initial review and there are not three options identified that allow the worker to recover their pre-injury wage, then they would undergo psychometric testing to determine the worker's ability to undergo retraining. The psychometric testing lets the planner know what length program and what level program will be best suited for the worker. Once we receive the report, an option is selected. If the option is direct entry, meaning the worker has all the skills necessary and can potentially go out with a resume and be hired, they would get employment readiness benefits for 12 weeks, and then the claim would either close at the end of that 12 weeks, or a partial extended earnings loss would be set up at that time. For claims that have either a partial or a full EEL amount payable, these claims stay with the short-term case manager for 60 days after the extended earnings loss decision is made and are then transferred to our extended services unit, which is comprised of case managers who just manage long-term claims. Any claims whereby the worker has to do retraining, these stay with the short-term case manager until the training is complete. And then the same thing would happen to these claims as with the direct entry, and that they would either close as there is no entitlement to wage loss once the workers completed their retraining, or there is a partial EEL payable, and then they would transfer to our extended services unit. These workers continue to receive wage loss benefits from Workplace NL until age 65. So I just thought I'd walk you through a quick example, just so you can kind of, from I guess a numbers perspective, see how this works. Mm -hmm. um, so if a worker whose wage loss is $500 a week, and we have found them capable of an option through the labor market reentry process, that they're able to earn $400 a week, this worker would be entitled to $100 a week from Workplace NL as their extended earnings loss um, decision. And because the option didn't allow them to earn what they made uh, pre-injury, if this worker was not capable of working at all, then they would be entitled to full extended earnings loss benefits and they would get the full 500 per week. Any claim that is on EEL, that they get reviewed annually to determine what the worker's actual income is. This is verified by the worker submitting income tax information. If they are earning more, so in this example I just gave, it would be more than the $100 a week, the claim would close at that point. And if they stay under that amount, they would just continue to receive that until age 65. Okay, so that was a, a lot of information. I agree. Um, and we, uh, we covered the initial processes, and then we covered uh, what would happen if it doesn't close after uh, the short term. And now we're going to um, ask, would this process differ if it is a claim that resulted from an exposure many years ago, such as an occupational cancer? So these claims are classified as occupational disease claims, and they are handled completely differently than our other workplace and injury claims. We have three dedicated case managers that adjudicate and manage occupational disease claims. So they manage for the lifetime of the claim, unlike the other claims that they would get adjudicated by our entitlement department, then they get referred over to the case manager in short-term claims, and then potentially get transferred again to a case manager in ESU. With these occupational disease claims, the case manager basically sees the claim through from beginning to end. And unfortunately, um, in a lot of these cases, the workers do not get better and actually get worse over the course of the claim. Mm -hmm. um, but we would explore return to work, as we do on other claims, if it is appropriate okay. um, as well. Okay. And are there any resources that um, could help workers and employers through the claim process? Absolutely. And obviously, we have a lot of complicated legislation and policy. So mm -hmm. for the injured workers, some resources that they can avail of are obviously the staff at Workplace NL, such as the case manager, return to work facilitator, um, intake adjudicator, um, as well as any information that's contained on our website. Mm -hmm. The injured workers also can avail of the My Workplace NL portal, which also has some information in there. And there's also the Injured Workers Handbook, which is available on our website and has a lot of great information for injured workers. Okay. Um, there are also worker advisors at Newfoundland and Labrador Federation of Labor, and they can assist injured workers throughout their claim and act as a liaison between the worker, workplace NL, and the external review division. Mm -hmm. And this service is free of charge, and their contact information is available on our website. Okay. So for employers, um, they also have access, obviously, to case managers, return to work facilitators, intake adjudicators, and the Workplace NL website. 
There is also uh, useful information on our Connect services, which is the online portal for employers. So here they will also find assessment information, prime information, and some claim cost information. Um, so they are also able to contact employer advisors through the Newfoundland and Labrador Employers Council. And they advise employers on workplace and legislation and decisions. There are two advisors available at the Employers Council. One deals with mid to large size employers and the other deals with small size employers. So is there a, an overall message that you hope the listeners from our podcast take away for today? Yeah, so I think one of the most important things is that workers really need to report their injuries to their employers as soon as possible uh, once they happen. And throughout the claim, there needs to be ongoing communication between all parties involved to ensure that return to work occurs as soon as it, as it is suitable for the injured worker to do so. Mm -hmm. um, and if either the injured worker or the employer has questions during any part of a claim, uh, please reach out to any of the staff that I've mentioned at Workplace NL or to the worker and employer advisors for further guidance and clarification. Well, thank you, Catherine, for sitting down with me today. We had a great conversation about claims and what workers and employers need to know. Please join us again for our next episode of The Signal and have a safe day. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us today. Transcripts are available to use in your workplace to increase workers' knowledge in various occupational health and safety topics. Visit WorkplaceNL.ca for more information on the services we provide to workplaces. Feel free to share the signal on social media to improve workplace health and safety everywhere. Thank you, and have a safe and healthy day.